It's a story you won't see on mainstream media. The English-speaking minority in southern Cameroon in Central Africa has been protesting against the central government for several months. The end goal is independence. Those protests have led to many deaths and hundreds of arrests. Internet access has been shut off in southern Cameroon to prevent any information about the protests from coming out, something that drew the attention of whistleblower Edward Snowden. Not the attention of the media, though. RT's Alexei Arshevsky was the only TV journalist at a Cameroonian protest in Washington, D.C. last week. This is his report. What does an average American know about Cameroon? Well, maybe aside that this African country has great soccer players, or some may know that it's also among the top crude oil producers in Africa. What you probably don't know is that sharp ethnic tensions are happening in one part of Cameroon right now amid almost total silence from the world media. Hundreds arrested since November, unknown number killed, an internet blackout imposed on southern regions of the country following months of protest, the reason for which lies deep in the country's colonial past. Before 19 the modern-day Cameroon was essentially two countries, a British colony and a French colony. In 1961, they merged into one through a free association plebiscite, which promised the English-speaking part independence by joining. However, for decades now, the Anglophone minority in Cameroon has been saying that central government tramples on their rights, from pushing out English language from schools to denying English speakers state jobs. This tension has now reached its boiling point. Since November last year, southern Cameroonians have been protesting with the demand of either changing the state system to a federal one or, as some part of protesters are urging, to let South Cameroon go independent. The response from the authorities has been brutal. I have to warn you, the pictures we're about to show you are extremely graphic. It's hard to independently verify the authenticity of this video, but South Cameroonians insist it shows the authorities clamping down on Anglophone protesters. And we can see in it people dressed in BIR t-shirts. That is the name of the Cameroonian government's troops. In total desperation that their voices are not heard, South Cameroonian community in Washington, D.C. took their anger to the French embassy in a vocal protest last Friday, and I went there. The police, the gendarme, the army, in fact, we are now occupied like it is a war theater. Because when the soldiers are on beat patrol, they see an ordinary citizen, they say, don't we embark, give him a bullet. And that's how they've been killing them. You see from the pictures, this is a young university student, second year in the university, who, you know, was gunned down. The Cameroon establishment is in a bloody and occultic partnership with the French establishment and the British establishment. Yes. They are giving room for the execution of the well-planned genocide. You may ask, why in front of the French embassy? Well, not only because South Cameroonians believe Paris has a huge influence on the Cameroonian central government run by Paul Bia, who's been in power since the 1980s, but also because they believe the French are deliberately silent and are not stepping in. The Bakasi Peninsula belongs to South Cameroon, and that's where a lot of oil was discovered five years ago. Easy to imagine that if those calling for independence of South Cameroon get what they want, France's oil interests and easy access to that oil would be scuppered. Alexei Roshevsky, RT, reporting from Washington, D.C. To talk more in depth about this situation, we're joined in studio by Herbert Bowe from the Movement for the Restoration of the Independence of South Cameroon. I really appreciate you being here today. Thank watching you very much. watching Alexi's story, a lot of those parts they're really hard to watch. Tell me what's going on in Cameroon right now. What's going on right now is that the government is trying to prevent the world to find out what's going on, which is they are perpetrating genocide. Um, we are a few days away from trial of the leaders of uh, lawyers and teachers who are just asking for a fair hearing from the government and. These are people facing treason now. They are facing trumped-up charges of smuggling weapons into the country. We have a situation of students not going to school. And we have a situation of people being arrested randomly, deported to the site, to the French-speaking part of Cameroon, and held in either concentration camps or in private prisons, like the ones we saw in Alexis' report, and are being killed and disappeared. 
Are there historic reasons for these calls for independence? Obviously, there's a reason for it. This escalation sounds terrible for the minority. What are the historic reasons to call for independence? Very briefly, from 1953 to 1961, this part of Cameroon had a self-government of its own that broke away from Nigeria after 44 years of association with Nigeria and put together a government of their own. From 1961, we obtained independence before the United Nations. The General Assembly voted on the 21st of April, 1961, granting that part of Cameroon independence. On the 1st of October, 1961, we were supposed to form a union of two federated states, two equal federated states. What we have gone through now is what we call linguistic apartheid. We've gone through a period when we are second-class citizens, perhaps third-class citizens. And at this point, we say, because we are an independent country, because we did obtain independence the same way every other country has obtained independence in the past, and because the union is not working, and the UN gladly provided for separation, we now want to separate. We want to re-establish re our independence. How long has the situation been this detrimental to the point that we're at right now? This has been 55 years, uh, you know, after f and, and 44 years in Nigeria. So it's a total of 99 years when a people just caught in the middle of what was the Cold War. Because the big problem here and historical documents from the Queen of England show that they were worried that this part of Cameroon was going to be influenced by Moscow. And they wanted it to, be, to lean towards Washington. And so we got sold on the altar of the Cold War. At that time, they would not consider independence. And they thought we didn't have enough resources. It turns out to be the, most, the richest part of Cameroon, 60% of the GDP at this moment. Alexei mentioned the oil factor in his report. Do you think that's why Bia's government has been going down so hard on the protesters and why France isn't stepping in? France has been hesitant because France has not granted any African country independence. All of the French-speaking countries remain totally colonial provinces of France. Everything, including economic, politics, and finance. The money is still minted in France. There's a huge series of protests on the 11th of February in 20 African countries to ask France to get away with the CFA franc. And France really fears what will be a domino effect across Africa if this were to happen in, in, in southern Cameroon. And so France is kind of frightened. They won't entertain this idea. And the government of Mr. Bia has known, has lived only because of savagery, has survived because of this barbaric treatment of people and like every dictator, he believes that this is the way he's going to stop our people. But for the first time, we've got a groundswell that is, in my opinion, completely unstoppable. Well, we hope your voices will continue to be heard. Spokesman for the Movement for the Restoration of Independence of Southern Cameroon, Herbert Bow. thank you so much. Thank you.